BioBalance HealthCast episode 218, A New Life on Hormone Pellets, Libby and Kent's Story. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week, Kathy, Dr. Moppin, and I are continuing a conversation uh, about the testimony of one of Kathy's patients. We've decided that sometimes we get a little cumbersome and that you might like to see real people talking about real experiences in their own words. And so this couple graciously uh, gave us permission to tape and use their testimony. And we're, we're excited about it because every patient is different and yet the patterns of what they experience and what bring them to you and and how they benefit are extremely similar and so over the next few months we'll show several individuals Mm -hmm. who want to talk about what their life experience has been Uh, and libby and libby Libby and kent both give their opinions or their view of the path that they followed since they've found Right. hormone replacement and come to see me. And, and we began this process in our last podcast. So if, if you're just coming to this today and you uh, are intrigued by what you see and hear, go back and look at last week as well. The, the things that Libby has to say about her experience are really, uh, I mean, she's an incredibly attractive and articulate woman and she's very open and honest about what she has mm-hmm. to say, as is her husband. I mean, it's a powerful statement about relationships and health and the benefits of of BioBalance Health and Dr. Kathy Maupin. So, so this week, we're going to begin with Libby talking about how she explains to her friends what has happened to her and what they ought to consider doing in terms of coming to you. Now, the biggest advertising that you have is word of mouth of satisfied customers. That's how she found you, and now she's trying to convince other people to come and listen to the way she does that. All of us want to talk to our friends and make them better, too, if we find the answer. So this is a good example of that. Yeah. Well, I've had this many this conversation with many of my girlfriends because most of my girlfriends are my age, and so I'm like, hello. It's not that you're going nuts. It's because your hormones are off. And so I, I tell them my whole experience with Dr. Mappa and the fact that she'll sit down with you for an hour and go over what you're experiencing and, and how supportive everybody is in the office. And I said, you know, some people might think that this is expensive. But how valuable is your life? Really think about that. And I tell people, there are two things I won't go without. My pellets and my Vima, which is my supplement that Dr. Maupin recommends. Because these are things that make a profound impact in my life. And if you want yourself back, I can't stress enough to go see her. And I say, you know, even if you go, you get your pellets, you decide you don't like it, no harm, no foul. You can go back to feeling bad, but I guarantee you probably won't. Libby is much like many of my patients. Mm-hmm. She is very efficient. Her, her mind works so that she looks at things in a global fashion and says, this is, this is helping me, and it offsets all these other things I used to be doing. So she find, she has found that hormone pellets and what we do at BioBalance plus her nutritional supplement Vima take the place of all these other gadgets and and supplements and pills and 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 she addresses the issue of cost because many people don't come to see me at all don't even try it because they're concerned about the cost yet she she gives us the opinion that it offsets it and that's something that I hear oh, so no, much no, no, no. It is so worth this because my life is better. And and in general, I see women not valuing everything they do, taking care of the kids, having a job, bringing in an income, and also taking care of the house, decorating, which I do my, by myself. And I mean, <laughs> because that's not a guy thing. Anyway, it's one of those things that you, you know, it's, it, it, you do all of these things. Had you had to pay for somebody to do this mm-hmm. because you're ill, 
it would be very expensive. Right. So you need to be well at the top of your game at all times. So nutrition and hormone replacement is what, what she has found, and she describes it beautifully. She does describe it beautifully, and she says her, her friends ask her about the cost. You know, well, but isn't that expensive, or does insurance cover that, which in most part it does not. Uh, and she says, what is your life worth? <laughs> which is an incredible answer. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. And, and she doesn't articulate the medicines that she's managed to stop taking and therefore stop I just paying know that. for. <laughs> but you know that because you spend time with her. And as she said in a, in a previous uh, segment, you spend an hour or more with her and you satisfy her questions and explain things to her. And she's very keyed in on how much better she is because she's aware of the relief and the change. It's that, that sudden. And then we and then and now we're going to hear from her husband. Yeah, which is a whole different viewpoint. I mean, she can. We all see things from a different point of view. If we just described when we were writing for the last hour, mm -hmm. how we both perceived that hour, we would have two completely different opinions about the same facts. But it's very interesting in looking at the the Venus and Mars point of view. So for me, it was interesting hearing Kent going. That's what men are thinking when we're saying this, yes. you know, and, and when listening to Libby, I'm sure that was educational for you as well. well so you got you got to hear this because it's a description of almost the same kind of thing. And they were interviewed separately. They were interviewed from separately. completely different points of view with the same facts. And, and he, in his uh, description, there's such a warm and loving and supportive embrace I love this guy. of what she was experiencing. And <laughs> he his loves her so much that, that you've got to love him. <laughs> but but his confusion about it. He said he says I thought I did something wrong, and then he goes on and he talks about what he saw, what he understood, and how she explained to him what was going on, mm -hmm. and and just listen to his words of discovery, but also listen to the love and affection and support that he articulates for his wife. And don't expect all this from your husband necessarily, <laughs> because uh, this is a very special guy. <laughs> and so, so don't he? You cannot set the bar here and say, "Honey, why don't you talk about me like that?" Because I mean, he's just a very special guy. So many men think these things; they don't say them. So give your give your uh, partner, spouse, a break, because my lovely husband would never say these things, but he s thinks them. And that's all I want to know. What's he thinking? So listen to this. You'll you'll love the you'll love how they describe it, but also the facts that they that they also describe. My wife one morning uh, she was getting dressed and she walked into the room and she goes, um, she just looked down and she goes, "What? Well, something's happening." And I said, "Well, what are you talking about?" She goes, "Look, I'm just I'm exploding. I'm things are not where they should be," and. Um, Right after that, it was one of those, I started to pay a whole lot more attention to what was going on with her body-wise. <clears throat> and uh, suddenly she was um, a little bit more, um, she, she would break down and, and just begin to cry for no reason. And I'm, I'm like, I was concerned I was doing something wrong. But I think what was happening was she was going through a, a momentous change at a, at a very young age uh, to this. Um, shortly thereafter, uh, I went out of the country. I was deployed uh, to a foreign country. And, and um, while I was there, she evidently had a conversation with some of her friends and said, these things are happening to me. And they recommended, oh, you need to see Dr. Maupin immediately because I think you're going through menopause. And she goes, I'm, I'm too young. And her... Her friends were going, oh, you just need to do this. So by the time I got back, she was in what I would call a, a complete meltdown. And um, I told her I hadn't been home 24 hours. <laughs> I was still had jet lag really bad. And I said, we are getting in the car, and we are driving to St. Louis, and we are going to see Dr. Maupin. And uh, we had the blood work, everything was in place, <clears throat> and we, we went. It was a totally silent trip until about Columbia, Missouri, when she just looked at me and she goes, just, just tell me I'm not going crazy. And I said, you're not, we're, we're going. So uh, after the visit with Dr. Maupin and she got her uh, first um, pellets, I noticed uh, a change back to the woman I married. And it was about uh, three days. And she was suddenly coming back. 
and it was a very, um, it was a good feeling. So, and everything since that time has been perfectly great. She's a wonderful person to be married to. I love listening to Kent's description of the three hours in the car with no conversation. I've had a lot of those rides in my life. And, you know, the nonverbal, you cannot, I tell people, you cannot not communicate. Uh, nonverbal communications are the most powerful form of communication. And when there's disparity, you know, I look over and say, is something wrong? And you say, no. Uh, but don't look at me. I'm not saying it to you. Not, your nonverbals are saying, yes, we always believe the nonverbals. And mm -hmm. so then after three hours of that tension, she turns to him and says, tell me I'm not crazy. His answer was so beautiful mm -hmm. and, and so on target. Uh, and telling about how men think. Yeah. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. We'll it's fix a problem. It. You know, I do problem solving and, yeah. and let's go solve this problem. And then he talks about coming uh, to you and what that experience is like. And that's he gets into that in the next segment. So, and his, he, um, he, I always ask husbands who come, well, what's your, what's your take on this? How do you feel your wife is? Because oftentimes women are afraid to tell people how good they feel for fear it won't last <laughs> or for fear that they'll be discounted that they're that they're not they're perceiving something differently than the rest of the world right. so it does two things for me to talk to the husbands which i i appreciate their coming and that is what's your point of view and please tell me the truth in front of your wife and you know what are the good things you see about your wife which gives gives their wives that even if they don't say it at home, he's saying it to me. So it gives that, it's kind of like, you know, handball bouncing it off of me to her, you know? So saying, oh yeah, she's so much happier and she's, and the kids are happier and I come home and it's, I don't feel the tension anymore. Things like that, that she then goes, it's working. It's real. I really, I'm feeling it and he's seeing it, which is huge. So to me, that's big. Yeah, it is big. So, I'd like you to listen to Kent and and hear his his um, just his view of um, coming to see me. I like to go with her uh, to her appointments because um, I want to be a great support, and I know what she goes through, and I know how well it's helping her, and I, I want to be there for all facets of that. So I, I I'm there. Um, if Dr. Maupin asks me, how are things going? I can tell her, awesome. And so there's really only one thing left to talk about that we haven't covered that's a very common experience, and that's sex. And both mm -hmm. of these individuals talk about the, their perspective on their sexual relationship before the treatment and after the treatment. So, so let's hear what they have to say. I noticed that there was a drop in uh, intimacy, and it, we are very active. And uh, suddenly it was, for example, instead of every day, it was once a week, maybe. And that, again, you know, that throws a flag in the air. Something's not right here. And, and I started to pay a lot of attention to um, either suggestions that were ignored or um, things that we would normally do that there was no real interest there. But again, after the, the pellet therapy began, um, that rolled right back to normal just um, very quickly. Not everybody comes in expecting to go back to the, to the sex life they had before, mm -hmm. but if you have a sex life like theirs, then that would be ideal. A lot of people have expectations that it's going to be different. It's going to be, a, you know, so much more than it ever was. And for some people who have had low testosterone levels all their lives, mm -hmm. it is better. More than it ever was. More than it ever was right. because I bring them back to normal and then they are fully functioning and they may not have been before. However. Well, actually, one client of yours that was a client of mine as well mm -hmm. called me after her first treatment and she said, I've got to ask you a question. She said, I'm obsessing about sex. I'm masturbating all the time. I'm mm -hmm. looking at the postman. <laughs> Am I in danger here of just like embarrassing myself or ruining my life? Is this going to happen forever? Yeah. And um, I actually warn 
most people about that, mm -hmm. especially if they've not had testosterone for years. Mm -hmm. This is this is an this is actually a physiologic outcome of the fact that your body is is deficient in testosterone, yeah. and women's bodies. Um, I mean, we we do without testosterone with when our ovaries die or get old. Men always have some. So when ours goes away, we have receptor sites all over our body that were made just for testosterone. And so receptor sites become much more sensitive to a hormone or to anything that it has it is deprived of because the body reacts to its environment and the body says, oh, no, testosterone, I have to open up basically it doesn't exactly open up, but let's just call it, it opens up all these receptors all over the body waiting for some testosterone to come by that can link to it and and, um, and essentially feed the receptor and, and help that cell act normally. Well, when you go from nothing with all these receptor sites open to a normal level within a month, mm -hmm. the receptor sites are flooded. And as long as you have not lost receptor sites, generally, you are women are just overwhelmed with kind of a sexuality that they've never experienced before and i don't intend for them to experience very long usually it is the first month mm -hmm. and then the receptor sites start becoming used to that hormone then they are not as sensitive they down what they call it down regulate right and the they, reservoir becomes stable right but it's it's kind of like they become less sensitive mm -hmm. so then they go to a normal sex life which is what I wanted in the beginning. This be, this first month is not intended. I can't make it happen again. It isn't. I mean, people come in and go in like they're on a roller coaster. Let's do it again. I'm like, no, we can't do it again unless I deprive you of testosterone for another ten years and do you know and give you some. But I mean, it's it's a matter of physiology. It, it is unintended, but some people are very disturbed by it. And I usually warn them that. I mean, I had that same thing. I had. It wasn't that long without testosterone, but I had the same issue where I was looking at the UPS guy and I thought, oh, put blinders on for a month. Okay, I'm just, because I, I, I was aware that you, that might happen. But you knew what to expect and you knew what was happening. Right, but These I tell them. These people don't. But I tell them. But they don't, that's not part of what they're listening to because right. they've been so far, they've been so long without sex that they don't hear it. Well, and that's what's uh, unique about this couple that we've just been listening to. They're time frame is very telescoped because he spent months overseas and then would come back and so they had a, an awareness and and she got on top of the situation early mm -hmm. uh, in terms of recognizing she was going through something that made her feel crazy she was well, just and, waiting for him to come home and, so that she could do yeah. something about it and and in my experience as a marriage counselor often what i would have would be discussions about uh disparate sexual desires that had stabilized in in the marriage mm -hmm. and, and so they drifted apart and then they were at opposite poles and they had developed uh, strategies and accommodations mm -hmm. for signaling, for cueing, for surviving sexually uh, and there was mm -hmm. anger and resentment and so on and then all of a sudden that drive comes back and they have to readjust their cueing mechanisms and their signaling mechanisms and their frequency expectations and it, it can be... Those are the people that get to you. Yeah. Many of the people that, that I see come back in four months ago Back to normal. Right. Everything's awesome. Yes. And I'm, I, you know, I'm orgasmic again. I'm having sex again with my husband. He's happy. Oh, and by the way, he's sending you flowers. I mean, I'm like, yeah. that's unnecessary. But they're, that you know, their husbands are very, very, very happy. But, but, but the people that come to you are people who have had long-term disparity or right. long-term loss of right. testosterone, and giving back hormones isn't enough. So right. that you have to walk them through. Right getting better. So I don't know that no, I'm, direct, not, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just no. saying I'm not I, I see a different side typical. of it. Yeah. It's not typical that that happens. It is it does require counseling. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you would see a higher number of those people because yeah. they don't just snap back into normal. This couple did well, and well, thankfully and it's, more, they did. it's more complicated than that in my business. Mm -hmm. uh, generally we would say that relationship problems, the, the power mechanisms in a relationship are sex and money. And usually one partner controls sex and the other partner controls money and that's part of how they fight. <laughs> and that doesn't have anything to do really with desire. I never really knew that that it was always like on the opposite. Yeah, ends. almost always. 
but that's a that's a conversation. That's for interesting. Day. Yeah, that would be an interest. That would be an interesting health cast and, and the parameters of that. That's really not in the OBGYN literature or <laughs> <laughs> or any of the medical literature that I've actually delved into. So that that would be a very interesting yeah. health cast. As always, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.